Hello and welcome to Castle of Horror, the show dedicated to horror movies and awesomeness. This week, we continue a series of abominable snowman movies with the film that bears the title Abominable from 2006, not to be confused with the children's animated film Abominable from 2019. Very month, different. <laughs> very, very, they, very they are. I'm they picture are that, like somebody reading this again. They have steered me wrong. Right. Or right, or like this is way better. I don't know. You could go either. I, way. I assume that the 2019 movie does not include somebody getting his face bitten completely <laughs> off. Oh, <laughs> this, God. this is episode 356. Bear in mind, if you haven't seen today's movie, we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of horror fans who have seen it. So, warning, spoilers ahead from denver colorado i'm your host jason henderson publisher at castle bridge media home of the castle of horror anthology with me from austin is tony sabaggio lead singer and bassist of the band desert to mars and lead guitarist of the band rise from fire say hello tony howdy howdy also in Austin, Mr. Drew Edwards is the writer-creator of the long-running underground comic Halloween Man, currently published by Comixology. He is a Best Writer Ringo nominee, Austin Chronicle Best of Austin Award winner, and a member of the Pen America Fellowship. Say hello, Drew. What's the matter? Don't believe in Squatch? Oh, golly. And finally, <laughs> also in Denver color commentary from julia guzman of guzman immigration of denver say hello hello you know the way i read that last thing i'm i'm sorry that's the first time i've ever read it where it really sounds you know like you're like you're the sponsor of you know a local swap meet or something like guzman <laughs> immigration of denver has sponsored this event um so so you know that's legitimacy i think so uh okay abominable this is a 2006 american monster movie directed and written by ryan schifrin starring matt mccoy who i always love in everything he does and then like this this like parade of well-known horror people jeffrey combs lance henriksen d wallace paul gleason uh and then with them rex lynn uh phil morris Haley joel the film follows paraplegic widower Preston Rogers as he moves back into the remote cabin where he and his now deceased wife once lived. Preston quickly realizes that a sadistic Sasquatch is, st is stalking the woods around the cabin uh, and harassing the young ladies who are renting the cabin uh, across the way. Nobody believes him. Um, this this film was recommended to us by Mr. Drew. So I'm going to get, let's start with Drew for opening thoughts. We'll go Drew, Julia, Tony, and then we'll just start working our way through it uh, unless I have anything to throw in. But um, uh, Drew, you said, hey, gang, let's watch this. It's like rear window with an abominable snowman. So uh, what are your opening thoughts? For well, I mean, obviously this is, greatly inspired by rear window um the structure of it and everything and i would argue also a lot of the musical cues are attempting to sound a little bernard herman-esque um i think this is i i've only seen this movie i think two times two times before i saw it once in a very when on its very very limited theatrical release when i was in las vegas um then i saw it again on dvd i don't know how long ago and then now i think it's fun all each time i've watched it i i really like the look of the bigfoot he kind of looks like a cross between the tasmanian devil and wilford brimley and it's, i like the fact that it's a guy in a suit um yeah. I, I i love the, all the practical gore effects particularly the the face munching of the worst character in this movie. oh good golly yeah, yeah by by far um and uh i think it's a good is it is it a perfect movie no i'm sure we're gonna get into that but i do think it's it's a good time i like seeing all the the genre actors i particularly always love seeing jeffrey combs in anything so i i the fact that he's in this um and of course, we were looking for something to to close out this trilogy of Yeti. Yes, and uh, you know, I think this is among the better uh, 
Bigfoot based creature features. So um, very cool. If you then you know have at me. <laughs> All right, e e excellent. Um, I, I want to, by the way, make note of the fact that that so-called worst character, and and he is a, a total a total jerk, oh. but is played by Christian Tinsley, who is an ad, Academy Award nominated uh, makeup artist, but he's not the makeup artist on this movie, which made me wonder, like, how potentially jerky you could be if you're like hanging around. You know, you're the actor, and you're hanging around the makeup no, artist. No, are you using are you using that using that foundation? Are you? Or are you? Are you? Are, are is you that sure? what you're doing? Are you sure, you want to go with that? <laughs> you guys, you know, I I, I I do a little makeup, right? I uh, I yeah, was nominated no, for an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? I so I I don't know. I would love to, I would love to have gotten his input on that. Anyway, uh, yeah, Julia. What are your opening thoughts about Abominable? Bearing in mind that we came well, from Yvette Mimu and Bo Svensson facing an Abominable last week, and now here we are with the face munching Abominable. Well, I think um, you said that Drew had called this rear window with Sasquatch, a rear window with Yeti, yes. something like that. And that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. I I love the concept of this film. I absolutely think that's brilliant. Like this idea that he's watching all these they, it's, he's watching all these people die in the other house but not from a serial killer or from a um mur you know the murderer but uh just from <laughs> from a from a yeti from a from a sasquatch um <clears throat> i think it's really scary I, I found i found many like especially actually more scarier toward the beginning before all the killing starts happening just the suspensefulness of it like you're just kind of like what's happening like oh my gosh he's being because he's a uh, so you have um your uh let me go to the cast so i can use their actual names rather than just be like the guy that whatever um so you have the um matt mccoy as preston rogers he's great he's so like he just seems like such a decent guy and he's in his wheelchair and he's got his stupid asshole assistant guy otis who as yep. you talked about is the worst character he's horrible like every time he would come on i'd be like just kill him already kill him now um, <laughs> the, so matt mccoy is um you know completely at this guy's mercy because they're in a cabin that's like you can only access it from the all these stairs like it's not even yeah wheelchair accessible so um he's there and immediately the asshole otis is like well, if you insist on not drinking milk and possibly dying, I guess I'll go get you some soy milk. I'll be right back. And it's like, no, 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 don't leave. I don't want you. Just, he's like, I'm just, I'm just going to go. And then he never comes back until, like, I thought maybe he was at least going to give an excuse like, oh, well, the, the power line fell or the phone line or whatever it was fell and, and blocked the road. But no, he's just like, eh, I had trouble finding it. So he's a total jerk. So this poor guy is all alone. Um, so my so i thought that whole premise is super suspenseful uh the fact that he's got a contagonist in his house super suspenseful because all you know he's, he's just getting in the way all the time and then the the girls across the way they come in to stay across the house across the way um so that they can so there's more victims for the, for the sasquatch but my favorite i gotta say is actually the the random hunters that played by like big you know pretty decently big stars especially lance hendrickson out in the woods trying to kill and they just get killed. like they just get killed right away so i think there's a lot of really great stuff um as you know i'm not a fan of gore so i, I thought it was well done but i thought it was horrible and i hated it um and i think you enjoyed this uh, movie though more than a lot of the films that we watched i i, I mean i thought we were watching really it and you were going oh this is great i really so i mean you know rarely is that the i thought it was really scary i thought I, as usual I, I objected to the gratuitous nudity because come on i mean whatever it was completely pointless but i is get it why gratuitous? it's is that, it was is that... super gratuitous okay anyway but we can talk about that later <laughs> i think it was pertinent to the story uh -huh. okay Okay, Tony. That's why this movie is for you and more, less, less for me. <laughs> Shouldn't have nudity unless it is pertinent to the story. Um, That's deep, man. I mean, <laughs> case in point, though, the Sasquatch is always naked throughout the whole thing. <laughs> Gratuitous Sasquatch nudity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. You just said that, and, and it made me think there are, this movie could have gotten so much worse. Yes. Um, <laughs> All right, Tony. What, what are your What are your thoughts? Um, 
I, you know, again, I, I think the the log line, the pitch for this, hey, okay, we're going to do rear window, but it's a Sasquatch, is, I mean, we've, we've talked about a lot of, like, lava shark things here. Yes. And I got to say, hats off, yeah. pitching this, getting it out there. Um, I like it because it does feel like ex- it's, it knows exactly what it is and it does everything it's supposed to do. It felt like a throwback to going to the video store yeah. as in high school, junior high and picking this, this is something we would have picked up. It would have something we loved over the weekend. And I enjoy all of that. Like it, yeah, it's lower budget. Uh, but you know, that it's all up there on the screen and all the, you know, it's got a lot of great actors and actresses in it. Like everybody's. Yeah. I, I was, they started rolling the credits. I'm like, Oh man, this is yeah. actually really cool. Um, I, you know, some of the music cues, Drew was talking about it, but some of the music cues I think suffer from a, a weird, I don't understand why there's a certain sound that comes up sometimes, especially in like kind of sort of supposed to sound comedic Mm. and it happens a lot in like in a little bit lower budget movies and i don't understand why they do that but you know i don't know that's that's so i didn't i guess i didn't catch all of the rear window music cues myself maybe i was too concentrating on that i did not i perhaps didn't like but i you know i always see it as this is a very comfort food horror movie to me Mm -hmm. and i mean that in all the best ways if sometimes you want you know the prestige horror flick and it does all those things and sometimes you just want like this feels like everything i would have wanted to rent yeah on a weekend in junior high and high school and now i get to to watch it as an adult for free and that's amazing right like the fact that we can watch all this horror um pretty amazing gore uh you know it's, the characters are the the kind of tropes that are in a, a lot of that we kind of grew up on as well so uh it's you can tell it's kind of done with hey let's let's take this premise and let's just run with it and i really enjoyed that uh it's maybe not a perfect movie but it sometimes that's the movie you want and this does yeah. everything it's supposed to do and i was i was pretty impressed with that the uh, uh, thank you, Tony. You know, I was I was just thinking about the fact that that this movie looks like we've seen a lot of like quote unquote low budget movies that nevertheless or that that are low budget and so they aren't color corrected. They don't they don't hold together. They don't look they don't look good. This movie actually looks really good. I mean, you know, but when you come to like the basic stuff that a competent director and and Schifrin certainly is, you know, he made the Halloween Tales. Right, and he, he uh, uh, tales of Halloween. Sorry, you know he knows he knows what he's doing. Continuity is good. You know, the, there's there's never a moment where you're confused about where you are, which is difficult because you know at, at base a lot of this involves one person watching a bunch of other people through binoculars, and um, so I thought, uh, what whatever they spent on this, it's all up there. I mean, it it, it looks really strong. I thought it was funny that there's this sort of super band going on where, you know, in all these minor characters, you've got these major actors just showing up. And I thought, well, is this, is there some connection here? Like, you know, like, like, it's not like Roger, Roger Corman's not making this. So he can't call up a bunch of, a bunch of friends and ask for favors. But yeah, were they got, like making another movie like next door? And they're like, yeah, hey, I don't I mean, it could have also, well, <laughs> hey, money's always, you know. Yes. Hey, sure. can you do this? But again, it could, it could have been, it could have been friends, could have been, hey, let's take a trip up into the mountains. Yes. And, and do some, you know, this sounds fun. Cause sometimes, yes. I mean, sometimes you read a script and, it's fun and why not, right? By taking all these minor yeah. characters and using recognizable actors, it it means you take a character that you would forget about instantly and you make it memorable because each of them is going to do their shtick. I mean, like Jeffrey Combs uh, <laughs> plays plays a chain smoking, um, o- uh, oxygen sucking uh, 
clerk at a little right. at, a, at a gas station. And what's that, Tony? I'm, I'm really yeah, no, disappointed right. yeah. that they didn't have him blow up at some point. I really felt like <laughs> that was, especially with all the Darwin Award talk. I was like, come on, really? Anyway, I think that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, but that was a great character. He was Jeffrey Combs was bringing way more to the character of of greasy, greasy haired buddy, the clerk, than any actor needs to bring to this character. Yeah, he says he based right. it on the, an uncle of his. Really? <laughs> I, I mean, the fact that he bothered to base it on anything, that's the thing. You know, it, it's because we've seen a million movies where minor characters, you just forget about it. Um, I think that the, like having these people in the movie is partly at least an advertising ploy to a degree because it gets you as a genre person you're yeah, right you're, you're you're especially in the time that this was released because video stores were still looking like you're perusing a video store and you see recognizable names on the cover yeah. and it's a bigfoot movie and you pick it up and you're like huh and you know he probably only had all of them for like like if you look at how much d wallace is in this movie right. he probably only had most of these people for about a day like that's probably yeah, right how much he could afford for like, even even matt mccoy you know like he's not like super famous but he's yeah. got decent credit so i'm sure he cost a decent amount you oh, know, no like... excellent point and, and and let's let's talk about about matt mccoy so matt mccoy is one of those actors who i could not have necessarily told you his name but i see him all the time you know it's been on like every show i've ever watched uh, he was in the hand, hand that rocks the cradle, and I literally, I love that movie, but I don't remember him being the dad because that's how long that long ago that was, and I haven't, I haven't rewatched it. But the thing is, he has a face that makes you, and this is an unfair thing in life, okay? But Matt McCoy has a face that is very trustworthy. You mm -hmm. see him, and you go, well, this guy's, this guy's not going to lie to me. Good this guy. is, this guy's, yeah. this is a good guy, you know. So. In comes Matt McCoy in his wheelchair, uh, ready to grapple with getting on with his life and, and hanging out in his cabin. And you know that that he's not going to be voyeuristic and, and watching the girls next door just out of purience. He's going to do it because he's concerned that there's a monster in the woods. You know, it's he he's almost like like he's not famous this way but he's a jimmy stewart type basically well i think that's actually part of the reason why they cast him oh shit jimmy stewart he, yes you're right yeah, i'm sorry like he's he he has like that jimmy stewart quality and of course this being a riff yeah because like there's some stuff that is is voyeuristic like like julia already was talking about it but like there's an extended right. scene where the main character is watching a girl take a shower and you know yes you know that he's trying to keep an eye out for a monster yeah but it it if you <laughs> didn't have a guy that was likable you would be like now wait a minute you know well, exactly. what happens with otis exactly. with otis picks up the thing he's like oh i see what you're looking at you're looking right. at, this, at this girl and so that's why um, so that so to the extent that it's not gratuitous that is the purpose of that being there is so that otis can be gross about it but what i meant by, by, by the part that was gratuitous the most to me was that she wraps a towel around her waist and then when the when the creature grabs her he, she's her boobs are like out and i'm like no that's not how women don't just wrap towels around their waist they wrap them around their chest so it's just that was like to me at that point i just kind of went okay look i got it that you're like oh you can see her in the shower and, and her ass is there whatever but then after that i was like okay we really didn't need her boobs to be in the scene where the monster grabs her that was just gratuitous so that's my my objection there oh i, mean, I i'm not faulting you for that like <laughs> I, I i'm just saying that because they cast a a actor with this sort of um again jimmy stewart quality to him yeah he does not appear cd even though the scene itself Isn't that a, is right kind of yes CD. right he doesn't you you give him the benefit of the doubt like uh yeah um why why do we have so in the in this story 
this guy who lost his wife last year in a climbing accident, a fairly famous one, because everybody in the town remembers it and talk about it a lot, which is just crazy and ridiculous, but whatever. In the it's not ridiculous of- if it was just if it was just six months ago and it's a small town. Sure. The only person in the universe in of this movie, a climbing accident that killed two people is something that is still on killed, the list. Killed one memorable. person and paralyzed the other, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so um uh and Anyway, the guy's come back and he's brought his home duty nurse with him. And I do not understand, because I don't know anything, I have no experience with this, zero. I don't understand how the relationship between uh, Matt McCoy and uh, Otis, the, you know, Chris, Christian Tinsley, the, the nurse, well, I don't you, know how their relationship you, works. Like, if you want to know what it appears to me, and this could be just me, um, reading in between the lines here i think he outside of being paralyzed has been into in a psychiatric hospital because like yeah that's kind of the impression i got as well yeah and you know there's, there's obviously more going on yeah obviously he's very traumatized by what happened to him like when he sure. finally gets around to re- recounting the accident it just sounds terrible but yeah um so and just also, Mike, I, you know, I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on this, but my own experience with psychiatric nurses is they can be callous sometimes. Sure. So, so like this no, guy, and, and maybe that's the idea. Is he? I mean, to some extent, the guy could be like, like a trainer. Like, uh, no, you're. Uh, we need to. You need to be spending more time on your own. So, I'm going to go to the grocery store. You're going to stay here, and it's going to be fine. So, to some extent, that kind of tough training might might be good i literally don't know what the boundaries of these people are and the script gives us zero in the way of of uh uh, what's the word i'm looking for there's no exposition as to as to how their relationship works um yeah i don't know uh anyway he's stuck with him is the point yes (laughs) he's all he's got however it came to be uh so yeah uh so they show up, and just after they show up, uh, the girls who are having a, a, a bachelorette party show up. I guess Airbnb being the the cabin across the way. Or, I don't think it's a bachelorette party. I think they're just hanging out. I didn't get. No, that. no, there, it's a big deal about how there's there's a wedding coming. Oh, up one of them's getting married. Okay, never mind. yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, so they're renting they're renting the cabin, and so the guy uh, Matt McCoy is watching them because he. At first, it's that he's annoyed that they're just making a bunch of a bunch of noise, but then he sees one of the girls just disappear. Um, yeah, she goes outside because because this is an important work. point. Yeah, it's an important point is there's bad cell reception. So, yeah, like which and that's by the super way, realistic. Yeah, well, that was something that I remember when I saw this the first time, you know, um, now almost a decade ago or over a decade ago, mm-hmm. is this was kind of the first horror film that I remember really dealing with the fact that um, cell phones were a thing and the internet was a thing and like in yeah. a real way, because like there was a, a lot of mainstream movies just kind of ignored them. Yes. Right. You know, or they'd go out of their way. There was a whole period around here where you had people just that the scenes would have them drive out into the middle of nowhere and make a point of saying they have no bars, you know, and 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 that their their phone didn't work. And and likewise, stuff like Identity, the one where where uh, John Cusack is like at a little motel with a whole bunch of people who one of whom might be killing everybody off. They make a point there. I remember they went out of their way to say that the phones weren't working. Basically, but it's the moment really phones realistic showed up, because yeah, we, go ahead. Uh, we take our children, we've taken our children, and we take the younger child to a camp in Colorado, a YMCA camp. And if you don't print out the, the directions on how to get there, you may not be able to figure out how to get there because you lose completely connection by the time yeah, you get to true. the camp. So it's like they don't even need to tell them they can't have cell phones. Cell phones don't work there. So yeah. it is very realistic that you would not have ability. I got to say the weirdest thing about that, Julia, is that I, I know that it'll be difficult to convey that this is strange, but I promise you – if you're listening, it is strange. You drive like, th- you know, the middle of nowhere, like hours into the middle of nowhere, into a bunch of trees, into this like Friday the 13th looking shit. 
-hmm. and you know there's a trailer there and a guy at a table and he's like filling out forms and going oh yeah henderson too okay here cabin 343 and you go lug some some stuff to the cabin and then you drive away you just leave your kid in the middle of nowhere (laughs) it's the it's it's the weirdest thing (laughs) it's just so strange yeah um yeah. Also, the internet in this movie is definitely the internet of 15 years ago. Oh, like, if you look at what yeah. how he types yeah. things, and then also the yeah. the video that very, very, very pseudo quick yeah. timey, yeah, early days video. You know, yeah, exactly. What was the video he watched? I don't but remember. He's watching, he's watching the guy talking about the Sasquatch, and and it's right. like super great, the super breaking up, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, uh-huh. just like the borders, everything as a as oh, a God, super yes. nerd, like all of the way it looks, like yeah. But you know, again, to Drew's point, it we I can look at it now. And yeah, it's it's dated in that way. But at the time, this is like, hey, let me look this up on the internet. Let me send an email because that's important. Because yeah, the cell phones are down. That that kind well, of stuff is actually interesting. The thing that I like about this is even though that this guy is in a wheelchair, you know, he's a proactive hero. Like yes. he's doing everything to the best. Of, and he's not mm-hmm. he's not an idiot. He's only like hindered by his situation. Like, yeah, he's right. not so totally helpless. Yeah. Not even slightly. He he can figure out a lot. I mean, yeah, he can even do climbing and stuff. I mean, yeah. It, right. Well, it, I mean, when he finally gets to the point where he's like, we got to get out of here, then yeah, he starts using climbing gear and whatever to to, to get he it, and the, the, girl, the final girl over the side. You know, the, but uh, because they've decided, hey, what we're doing is rear window, it gives, it gives them an opportunity to like do stuff that we don't actually get to see very much in the movies in a sense, you know? Like, like honestly you don't actually have that many heroes who are who who use a wheelchair it's not that common you know and and especially not in an action movie where the guy is getting injured and thrown around and and you know it, where he's a where he's a he's a fully realized character you know with yeah. with all kinds of problems of his own and and so forth um you know and we've talked before about how horror movies often will sort of push the horror and science fiction will push the boundaries of what you can expect from film in ways that that's like quote unquote mainstream films don't so you'll see stronger female characters in horror and uh aside from all the and all the gratuitous nudity that's the hilarious thing is you'll do both of those things you see marginalized people from marginalized backgrounds will have a more prominent a role but you'll also see all, all kinds of crazy exploitation it's horror is fascinating to me for that um really you should do a whole podcast on it <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so you know the funny thing is the sasquatch attacking the random other characters is almost completely in fact now that i'm thinking about it the two farm people the farmer uh, becomes part of the trio of campers that includes Lance Henriksen and Jeffrey Hunter. So, and, so we, uh, we should talk about that. That's how it Jeffrey opens. Combs, it opens with the farm, and the some some and something is getting the livestock of this of this farm couple. Um, and yeah. so and and they see. I guess they see it. Um, I felt really bad because. Um, the Stone. poor poor D. Wallace, D. Wallace, yeah, poor D. Wallace uh, is like stuck, you know. But I guess l- l- wondering what happened to her husband because he never came back after that. Like, yeah, I mean, but what's so yes, and and we should discuss that. But I I just wanted to point out that their world is completely sealed off. In other words, they they're really just adding extra time and allowing us to see how violent and scary the monster is, because other because you could lift them right out and you'd be left with an hour-long movie with matt mccoy versus the monster but again it yeah, adds suspense because you're like what's doing this what it's got huge footprints what's going on you know yeah so you don't see the monster for a long time it also yeah. gives you a sense of i think the geography of this mountain that they're on yes. um and I, although i will say there is one thing that drives me crazy about this part is Lance Henderson is supposed to be a hunter? Yeah, and by his dialogue, it's supposed to be that he sounds like that he's like a good at hunt, a hunter. Yes, a good at hunting. 
he has the flashiest coat and boots on that I have yeah. ever like like he would be in like camo and just like you know boots that would be appropriate to to wear in the woods not um yes these like rattlesnake skin you know urban cowboy thing <laughs> well also I, when 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 they think the creature's out there they just start shooting into the trees like it's silly well, that's, uh, more it's, pan- that's more panicking than anything else you think so okay yeah, yeah. Oh, i took it as he yes he was a, some you know awesome hunter but also he's out there he doesn't really think it's this isn't where he's going to go out on a lease and hunt deer this is yeah sure i'll go out with you uh well, he likes and talk he about quote, likes to ki- he likes to kill shit right yes. and i think that part of that also he just like they decided like yeah you know look cool it was more about looking cool but to your point i just took it i saw that but i also took it as he doesn't really think this is going to be anything so he's like yeah i'll go out there you know and that's why he's not in full yeah you know i'm a super hunter i'm gonna take down a sasquatch gear (laughs) although if uh they had managed to kill the the monster they would have been the people to prove that bigfoot is real yeah that's true well if if you were in the situation like like if you tony or, or or drew if you were out there and um and you and you realize that your your party your your bachelor party were being harassed by a bigfoot would you call the police and say there is a bigfoot or would you just say i think i think there's a bear killing people i mean it seems to me that that's number one what you need to be doing is the police aren't gonna believe you i think i would have i think i would have probably lied um yeah but I also said at, at worst you know worst case scenario there's something attacking us and we're not sure what it is but it's huge it probably is a bear but whatever it is is wrecking things can you please yeah. come save us yes i would also be trying to to leave like i right. uh, <laughs> like i i i would be done a lot quicker than i think the other people in this movie would be. <laughs> so the, the problem is that they already had lost people, so it wasn't they couldn't just leave their. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing if you're like, oh, some livestock just got killed, but it's another thing if you're like, my friend is missing. You know, mm. you can't just take off, really. At least I think that was the idea. Uh, yeah, that's that's fair. That's absolutely right. Uh, there's a there is a tech thing that they do here that I think is made up but i didn't really follow it where he manages to find he, like he manages to send a text message i think but he he uses an online directory service for cell phones which we don't even yeah. we still don't have he finds the girl no it's just a white pages thing it's just that her white pages listed that her, her cell phone because that's what okay. he looks at he looks at white pages um and then yeah he calls he texts the phone and then he calls it so they hear it ringing. That's um, what I understood. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, okay. So uh, after he starts realizing that that there is that there is a monster out there, um, the the next sequence is where the monster basically Otis goes to town and the monster starts killing all of the bachelorettes. So. Uh, that that is a whole sequence where where the monster starts picking them off, starting with the girl in the shower, who they who has a truly creative death scene. I mean, it's well, really, no, it's start, really starting wild. with the girl in the woods, the one who went yes, out to use. Yes, but her she's phone been phone. gone for a while, and yeah. they they've, they haven't figured out what's happened to her. So now they've gone back into the party. So uh, brunette girl goes to take a shower, and then as she's toweling off. Uh, she gets near the window and Sasquatch reaches through the window and grabs her and then like pulls Second her back floor through the window, window. by the way. How did he get up there? Oh, I, I, that's yeah, a solid. he's big. He's, no, he's he must have climbed a tree or something. Because Maybe he's holding on to the floor. side of the well, building with his he's, clothes. He is, yeah. he is pretty damn big though. Like Tony's right. Anytime 
you see him positioned next to a car like yeah but he's not 12 feet tall i mean or if he is maybe he is i don't know um he just seemed like he was grabbing her out like straight back through a second floor window so i felt like he was up on on something i i that the very first time i saw this i was legitimately floored and like taken back at how gruesome that that death yeah. scene was like and it completely like you know it's coming but it still somehow managed to like take me by surprise it is shocking well, it's, yeah. yeah i mean I, like how did she not get the the actor gets i mean i get that they well, use it's a, like it's a, glass it's a big rubber girl that they're pulling out. oh that's so why. They, they swap her out <laughs> like it's had to get cut up all all the ribbons but yeah. yeah i mean i i think i think it's a quick cut i haven't slowed it down but i think it's a quick cut and then he pulls the dummy through, and I could swear we've seen that gag in something else. I just they did something remember. similar in Freddy versus Jason where they fold a guy in a bed, but mm. like this is like pulling somebody through, like I don't know, like it. This is this is some. This is I mean, why I like this movie, okay? Yeah. Because like this is a low budget movie, but they are swinging for the fucking fences like yeah they 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 really are like okay we're gonna make the scariest damn movie we can possibly do yeah yeah well you'll see that you know there's been a more than a few gags in like airplanes where people get pulled out the tiny airplane that's true window. so it, it kind of is like that but yeah folding the person through there but also you know before that we get some pretty gruesome gore in the cave where you know lance henry finds uh finds the one girl and to the point where he's seen enough he's been through enough stuff and he's seen things he's a killer and even he's like oh this is really gross (laughs) yes that is that is a really funny line oh that's really gross that that's i mean that's a that is that is a good nod on at her torso and that's i think that's where we first see a lot of the you know, that's where we get exposed like whoa the gore effects are not messing around in this movie well and the funny thing is i actually generally often find horror comedy to be tiresome but the humor here is working for me you know and i know that it's a it's a clearly it's a crapshoot like whether i'll think something's funny or not but i thought that was really funny I, in fact i thought most of the gags in this in this movie were funny because... I don't know that I would call this a horror comedy per se, though. It's it's a I would say this this yeah, is, it's not a comedy. It's it's got yeah. some humor in it. I guess but... what I'm talking about the comic relief bits, or rather yeah. the little ironic right. bits that are thrown in. Some of the lines of dialogue and well, and the fact that they throw in like the you know d- don't mess with the bull um, with the guy who played the For principal. Paul Gleason. In the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Breakfast yes. Club. <laughs> yeah, that oh. was great. Um, it was really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so while while these, um, uh, you know, after that killing happens, uh, our guy is trying to get everybody's attention. He's trying to get the police's attention as well. He sends an email to them. And Paul Gleason, the sheriff, uh, who is well known as, as the jerkwad uh, in Breakfast Club and also the jerkwad in Die Hard. So, and he's the same character here. He's like... He's like, no, don't do anything. It's you know, um, he's like overly macho. It's he's a joke. I mean, I think Paul Gleason's doing doing exactly what the script calls for, but this guy's so just inhumanly, absurdly macho that it's it's I don't know. It, it's it's a joke. Um, there's another killing that I love which is where like one of the girls is in the, and again, we see all this through the binoculars that Matt McCoy is watching through. So this girl is running around upstairs and the Sasquatch like somehow reaches through the floor and drags her down to the floor below her to, to, <laughs> to eat her, which is, is another just stunningly funny well, and, and the, the, that's the other thing is like uh, this isn't ambiguous. Like a lot of these other um, Bigfoot movies that we've watched recently, it's it's a little more like you never see what the Bigfoot is doing yes. with people. Like certainly in the last one, and like this 
it's like it's it there's no nothing left to your imagination he's like eating these people <laughs> yes um <laughs> he takes giant bites out of her neck and well, on I, screen you know yes. i love how expressive i i know i already gushed on the monster suit a go crazy bit, but i love how expressive this bigfoot is like he's mm -hmm. got this like really angry face with like a gigantic maw of of teeth like it's far more monstrous than i think of yeah. like w w any other interpretation of bigfoot that, yeah. that we've ever had it's just it's it's just completely over the top and yeah. i i mean that in a a, a you know his head it looks like his head size of like a freaking pumpkin or something yes. like his head is just gigantic and you know it i don't know like i i really dig that they didn't go like the sort of normal um he doesn't look like a gorilla or anything like that like right. it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 just i again i said it's like it's got almost kind of almost reminds me of the tasmanian devil a bit yeah i mean is it meaningful to like you think of the you, you mentioned um what's the white abominable snowman from empire strikes back what's he called oh the wampa, the wampa? yes okay wampa looks like a real creature at least to my mind it looks like something you believe this one looks more to me like a like suit. a like a suit yeah but i will tell you i was scared of it and it still looked way 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 better than for instance if it had been a cgi uh creature and for uh, the budget i think this is an impressive yeah it impressive is a really impressive suit. suit i did like the also there's the alien homage as the you know creatures right beside her face like they basically go like hey let's frame it like oh that. that's right yeah good point tony <laughs> yeah was like okay you guys get it like yeah that was pretty good actually <laughs> that actress's name is Haley joel and there's a moment when it's just sort of breathing on her face and you're like, it's, it could eat her face right now because we've seen him eat other faces. And right. uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> well, that's the other interesting thing about this. This movie has a final girl of her own story. Plus it has Matt McCoy, who is the hero of his own story. And then they wind up sort of sort of banding, uh, banding together. Um, but yes. Uh, and it did and, remind me of of your you know your book and and stuff we've talked about too because let's while it starts out as uh you know we're rear window with cryptids eventually yes. he does have to use his climbing expertise to save them both yes and let's you know they don't let you forget that he actually was a climber and he uses his the story to kind of help her out yeah. as well about you know everything he's got to work for but you know that that kind of like it's not just oh he was a climber in an accident okay cool now he's in a wheelchair it's like oh okay well he's going to use that now so isn't it great i mean it's when you think about it that's so much more work than a lot of creators will do you know how you've you've kind of connected the dots and you and you have things come back again and and so forth that that's that is that is really impressive. Well, and it uh, was a super suspenseful scene when they're do when they're using the climbing gear because the creature is so much smarter than they thought he was going to be, and so she's like, he's he tells you know the girl, okay, you're going to come down, um, uh, you know, I'm going to lower myself and then I'm going to lower you. So he's she's coming down slowly, and then the creature starts pulling her back up. And yes, gets like right, she gets her right in his in his face. He starts sniffing her, and just then, the one good thing that Otis fucking Otis does in the movie is that he 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 uh, he like attacks the creature with an axe right then. Which yes, was like, and then of course the creature. That's and then that's the more the most gory scene is when he like you said, you know, oh, he just oh, he eats his yes. face off. So Man, I, wow. I as much love this scene. Everything we've seen up from Otis at this point is that he is a craven asshole. He's such a jerk. And I don't believe that, like, okay, so admittedly, um, Matt, Matt McCoy's character actually has, like, had drugged him because he, he was hampering him from trying to save the day. No, he, uh, he drugged him because he was about to get drugged. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was, he just yeah, he was about to him. drug him. Yeah. yeah. But 
I don't believe for one second that Otis wakes up, he sees a Bigfoot about to murder somebody, and he's the sort of guy to like pick up a, pick up an axe and throw himself in front of you know one ton uh, of yeah, killing. Uh, yeah, like I think you're right, he'd you're be right. creeping creeping on. He would like uh, run away screaming. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that like he he like I I I love the scene. I love the fact that he gets like this gruesome death because he's such an yeah. asshole. But yeah, don't a hundred percent buy that he would he would he would have done anything heroic. Yeah, no, I agree with not you. at all. What a dick. I agree. Come I on. mean, I, it the reason he did is because he got to say ass monkey. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's but I'm on. with you. That's why. <laughs> I uh, I agree with you. I could, you know, Marvel no prize some reasons, but you're you're right. You, you just have to go with it. That's that's that. This is how we get out of the scene. What I love though is how they've thought, as though they have a whiteboard up there. They've thought how to carry this axe from scene to scene, you know, because the axe shows up, the girl brings the axe, he throws the axe on the floor, so then later when the monster is sniffing uh Haley Joel Otis comes up behind with the axe puts the axe in the creature he gets his face eaten but the creature moves on into the next scene still carrying the axe so the axe is moving it's it's really neat to just see that that sort of continuity uh going on i don't know i enjoyed that well, especially uh, since the axe ends up being uh, uh, important the axe being in the creature's back is an important yes. part of the final act. Yes. So I, I will give you that. Yeah. No, it's it's cool. Uh, they, let's see, how does it actually happen? They 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 try to get to drive away, but the creature picks up the car, and then he drops it, and so then they drive straight into a tree, uh, and then, and then while while the girl is unconscious, Matt McCoy, who now is like completely, you know, Bruce Willising this movie, you know, without the use of his legs. He 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 goes, I know what I'll do. I'll use this 1980s station wagon backwards to jam the creature into a tree. And and it turns out jam the that'll like punch the axe through the creature and do all kinds of damage to it. And then and and presumably kill him. it. Yeah, kudos to him for also not just like backing up and then driving away, but like no <laughs> <laughs> do the right do the thing that we always See, yell at the screen for people to do and just lay on the like he he shoves the gas pedal down and he keeps yes the but on him, it. i 100 percent believe that this guy is a guy that will put himself in harm's way to, yeah. to save yeah, somebody absolutely. like he's he's shown absolutely. these traits throughout the entire movie um, he's so great. I mean, I love this character. I want more movies with this character. <laughs> you want you want a whole series where he he just becomes a big well, hunter after this? Yes. I mean, there sure are a lot of freaking yetis for him to come back and fight. So yeah, that's true. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised. Well, you wouldn't be surprised. You know very well. But I mean, sometimes I'm shocked by what gets a sequel. You could easily have carried this character forward. I I really do want to see him fight some more monster crime, you know. Just some more it, of the freaking yetis, like it could be yetis, could be but iron, you know. iron sides, but with monsters. Yes, you mm-hmm. said it first, right here. Iron yeah, there's a log monsters. line as well. <laughs> it started with uh, rear window with cryptids, and now iron side with monster, like some yes. some kind of iron side Kolchak combo. Yes. Person. Well, the girl, yeah, yeah. the girl could be his legs in the field, and yes. he could be the master planner. And they decide we're gonna, we're, we've had enough of these damn monsters. We're just gonna, we're just gonna take care of it. Yeah, yeah. And there's, and and the great thing about that story, by the way, you could just do this tomorrow. You could just change all the names and just just rock on. Um, the great thing about it is the the characters. Don't, you don't do that listening to the podcast because we thought of the, that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just trying to wonder is there a will there want the storyline i don't think so because they're so no, far apart I in would, age I would, so no. instead it's more of a father daughter dynamic yeah absolutely and then you introduce a new guy who's maybe the op center guy or whatever and then so he would be the will they or won't they 
you're in good shape. I mean, this you, you could you could do a lot of uh, you could do a lot with this. Well, that is you know you bring up roman- the, the romantic tension. That is one of the things I also kind of like about this movie is, you know, they don't try to shoehorn something like that in into this, even though he's a widower, right? Like, you know, because there's there wouldn't be any time for it. You know, like no, there's not. It's a pretty is, it's a pretty tight film. Yeah, he's he's very tender and kind to this girl. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the relationship is, is nice, but it never once seems like, you know, he's, and, and frankly, yeah, it would be inappropriate because he looks like he's in his like fifties and this girl's probably in her twenties. This girl is his daughter's age. Yes. If, he, if, yeah. So yes. So basically as he forms his team, you'll wind up with a romantic Right. Okay, but we need to get back into the actual film that we're watching. They, as opposed yeah, to the, the film that we're writing. Yes. So, um, wow, that's a neat idea. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, that's the end, right? I mean, after he, as Tony says, he jams his shoe into the gas pedal. Well, he crawls I mean, that's out. the first ending. Is that he's like, okay, this guy's dead. Cops show up because fi- that good cop, as opposed to the asshole sheriff, who's also yes. not as bad as, as Otis, but also an asshole. Because um, he was like, no, I'm not going out there. It's 25 minute drive. Like, no, that guy's crazy. Um, <laughs> the other guy is like, ha ha, okay. And then he's like, no, I'm going to go. Um, yeah. So he goes. And so then they they call out because now because five people are dead so they call out the 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 cavalry or whatever and the cavalry is the sheriff and the three deputies and they're in the woods and so so the the two the two you know final girl and final guy get taken away by ambulances yeah and so now the yeti that we saw get smushed is gone apparently well we didn't see that until a, a little bit later but yeah but yeah he's, the, he's missing he's gone Halloween and, style yeah. So jackass sheriff is going, you know, why are you going? What's wrong with you guys? Why are you so like jumpy and like whenever there's a branch or something? And then all of a sudden they look and when they hear this growling, and you can see the shadows of like twenty five of these guys. It's like yeah. oh my god! I start screaming. I'm like oh my god, that's horrible. So yeah, yeah they definitely. Were Although it is it is sequel. realistic because I mean, where there's one, there has to be more. Would, one would think, yeah. Yeah, one would sure, think. Uh, and for sure, if this one got injured, they're all like, oh, we got to come have your back. If it, cause it clearly, uh, And he might have died and they might have dragged it off, or he might just be injured and then they came to like. But anyway, the point is that that, that drew them all out because they're like, okay, we got to come. We got to come see what's going on with these people who hurt our, our person. Yeah. 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 And, 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 Clearly, yeah, that one is going to. I guess he's he's gone back to to nurse's wounds, but um, which leads us to the next film, which is Assault on Precinct Thirteen. But with <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Or yes. Night of the Living Dead of Yetis. Yeah. Yes, but, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's... They take him back to the <laughs> to the sheriff station, and oh no, Precinct that... whatever you know. Colorado precinct. It's, not, it's, like, it's actually California. This movie. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. it does look awful an awful lot like Colorado. It it does. I, I'm still. I guess I'm just thinking about last week. It's yes. in my brain. Mountains yeah. and such. But yeah, yeah for it the, to be take them back to the. They would have to take the Yeti back to the precinct, like for reasons unknown, and all the other Yetis have Yeti to come it. get him. Well, you know? if the if the Yetis were smart and they wanted it silence, like we don't want anybody talking about us Yetis. Yes, <laughs> and they would go after them, and so that's like the movie we watched last week. Up. Yeah, that's like the movie we watched last week. Yeah, try or to the clean week it before. Out. Yeah, last week. Yeah. Wait, yeah. was that the last week or the week before? The one with the, where the where they're like we we uh, there's not we don't know anything about an yeti. That was the that week was the before. Oh, okay. yeah. That was the hammer when the abominable snowman. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. I did make the terrible joke and <laughs> had to explain it. But so far, we've done these movies, and unlike you know you. Yukon Cornelius was wrong, and none of these fumbles have bounced. Uh, no. <laughs> we've seen no evidence. That Although that may be how bounced. maybe that that may be how this one was able to pull her through the window if he bounces. Mm-hmm. Possibly, yes. but yes. <laughs> I was lied to you by that. Bounce, yes, they, but they, they don't in swim. these movies. 
Missed yeah. opportunity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so so that uh, amazingly that brings us uh, to the end. Um, but bef- before we get to the final thoughts, I just wanted to mention. I love what this movie looks like. I mean, I'm a sucker for, mm-hmm. for like, you know, cabins in the woods and, and just all that. Yeah. And it just looks great. I, I really, really didn't enjoy it. So that was, that was neat. It was a cool, cool choice on, on Drew's part. So that brings us to our final thoughts on, on, um, uh, what you thought of Abominable, the, the 2006 movie, but also, you know, I think it's fair to talk about what you thought about this, you know, not very giant retrospective, but uh, what we probably will have one bonus episode left uh, next week. So, Drew, we're going to start with you. Um, final thoughts about Abominable, but also just your thoughts about about the Abominable Snowman retrospective. Um, first of all, I, I, I am enjoyed this movie because, uh, when you, you do one of these more lower, lower budget things, you never know like, uh, how that's going to go down. So I, I was pleasantly surprised that everybody else seemed to enjoy it more or less yes. around the, the same, same level that I do. Um, fun movie to discuss. And, you know, as, as far as my feelings on this, this topic, what a fun topic to yes. spend the the winter discussing. I think um I think we should do you know lake monsters at some point. You know, I think oh, yeah. I, 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 I I like this idea of delving more into cryptids once every once in a while. Alien, alien we could do alien abduction movies or something at some point. Oh hell like yeah. This, yeah, like I I I had a great time talking about this stuff and um three very with three very different movies about the same subject by the way yeah we went we went from like very somber and cerebral to uh gory and insane within three weeks so that's kind of cool too yeah there's so many different word clouds you could hit by the way as far as like which way to go with you know the woods alien abductions you could do a whole x-files retrospective you could do, you know, Lake Placid kind of stuff. I don't know. There's a lot of, uh, you know, I would really like to do Without Warning, which is an alien alien invasion around a lake movie with Martin Landau and Jack Palance. So there's there's like, there's there's a lot of ways that, that we could go. Um, thank you so much for this. I really, this is so different from Snow Beast and from Abominable Snowman, and it was really cool. Julia, uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Like I said, I mean, I think it's a well done film. It is not a movie <clears throat> that I personally would watch if I'd known everything I know about it because I don't like gore and slashy. You know, it's a it's like a slasher movie, but with you know with <laughs> with a, a yeti. Um, however, it, it cause, and it's really scary. Um, so it's not it's it's when I say I don't like horror movies, this is what I'm talking about because I actually like most of the horror movies that we review on this podcast, but I don't like this kind of movie. However, it's really well done. I like I say I love the concept, and yeah, if you like scary movies and you don't mind gore, it's you're gonna like this movie because it's a lot of fun. Um, and the setting is gorgeous. That performances are great. So um, it was a good movie that uh, I enjoyed, despite the fact that it's the type of movie I don't enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful that <makes> sense. <laughs> that's that's fantastic thank you thank you very much um tony what what about you yeah i i enjoyed it as exactly what it is the the idea behind it is like i don't know if this will work and it they make it work in the one of the best let's watch this weekend uh video uh, feeling movies I've seen in a long time. Um, and I watch a lot of, you know, <laughs> schlock and, you know, all, all men, high, high end movies, bottom basement, uh, you know, budget movies. And, you know, this sits kind of to me like firmly in the middle because obviously they have, you know, really excellent cast and the like, gore looks just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that we saw it. I, you know, I, again, like you, you see, like, oh, is this going to be good? I don't know. Um, you know, just from the box art, it didn't have, 
it didn't have quite the box art that I would have that would have really grabbed me. I think from the from the right. '80s, which is its only like that's not even a sin. That's just the way it is. Uh, so, but yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised. It you know, there's parts of it that maybe I didn't like as much as as other parts, but overall, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's always when you when you get that feeling that you have a crew creating a film where everybody's in on it and everybody's pushing for this uh, kind of one, you know, everybody has the vision. And when you see that vision realized, you really do feel, you, you, it doesn't feel ironic. It doesn't feel disingenuous. It feels exactly what it's supposed to. And that's, again, for me, that, that does it all the time. Um, you know, who, who knows? I mean, <laughs> maybe I could, I would meet the people involved and they go, oh no, we just, we had some money and, you know, it was burn a hole in some investor's wallet and we did that. But I don't, I don't get the feeling and, and I hope they would never tell, I hope to never find that out <laughs> if, if that was ever the case. But it does, to me, it does really feel like, let's go with this premise and yeah, you know, let's get a crew together and just go do this and this is what it's going to be. And I think that's great. Wonderful. Yes, everything you said. I this this one really was a joy. And it's so seldom that I'll put in a movie and it just makes me smile with the with just how much people's work uh and love for their work is is being shown on the screen. Um so wow, one of the most violent movies we've ever watched, and we all just came out of it. This is the feel good movie movie of the year for us. It's really wild. Um so that's cool. Let's get our endorsements. I want to know what you would recommend, or what you've been loving. There's been so much going on, so I'll have to I'll have to pick some stuff. Um, but Drew, what about you? What do you have to endorse? Um. Well, I, I've been really busy this last week, so I haven't taken in my usual diet of pop culture. But I have watched a few things. Um, one was a horror film. 1958 that I've always wanted to see but I never have mm. uh called The Return of Dracula which uh, yes. is just sure uh, it's just sh- finally shown up on Amazon Francis Letterer right yeah and it's it's an interesting completely for the time contemporary version yeah. of you know, there's no capes there's no you know widow's peak hairdo like it's almost like a film noir dracula yeah. and it's 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 a really interesting version and if you know you're you're always looking for those weird um it, it's strange because it comes out the same year as the christopher lee dracula That's which right. is of course iconic um but i i greatly enjoyed finally getting to watch watch that um I've also this is this is almost a a, a by proxy David Bowles endorsement because mm. David uh, brought up this this show on uh, Twitter. It's called Archive Eighty One, and uh-huh. it's, yes, it's a horror TV show on Netflix. And um, I've only I think watched it's the number one thing in Netflix right now. It might it might be it really rock solid and creepy as hell um i haven't finished it i've only watched two episodes of it but so far i am digging it and if you are a a aficionado of um you know lost television lost films um you know old old vhs tapes that kind of thing like you'll you'll find a lot to take away from this but um so far i'm digging it i'm not, again i'm not done with it um i can give what i've seen a solid thumbs up and also usually if david recommends something it's 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 a pretty pretty safe bet that it's it's going to have at least something that's worth your attention and i'm really looking forward to it uh, we just haven't we haven't watched it yet but we're definitely going to and it's and- it's it's impressive and creepy like i i i'm digging it so far very cool. Uh, Julia, what what do you have for us? Um, I also have a Netflix c- uh, series. Um, mine um, is a, what's it? Harlan. Harlan, Harlan Coben. Coben. Yep. Harlan, you talking so about was, Safe? 
yeah, so there are several Harlan Coben, a bunch of Harlan Coben series on Netflix, but this one is actually not based on a novel. It's called Safe, and it's about this um, na- uh, safe, you know, gated community, and uh, it's so good. It's so like twisty and turny. There, it, 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 like, if you're the kind of person like me who watches something and goes. Uh, I know who did it, or like I know it's one of these two, and then the whole time you're going, yeah, I know. Like this is that uh, the kind of of uh, thing where you you just the whole time. First of all, there's a bunch of mysteries, not just one mystery. There's a whole bunch of mysteries. You're like, why are these things connected? What? Why is this person looking at this thing when it has nothing to do with that other thing? Like all this, and then you never, um, like you may at toward like toward the end, you may come up with who the person who did the main mystery is. But even then, you're like, I'm not sure. It could be this. But there's so many twists and turns, and there's so many mysteries. I just loved it. It was such a fun, like, I could not. We watched it in two days, and it's eight episodes. <laughs> so yeah. I loved it. Um, I'm also starting to watch the new episodes that, that uh, dropped of Ozark, which is a great show. But um, but I actually preferred this other one so far. So really yep. cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and, yeah, we watched that one together. And, and and it's the funny thing is that's the second Harlan Coben thriller series on Netflix that we've watched in like two weeks. And yeah. it's, it's, and I suspect that we will watch more of them because apparently, and I really would love to get to the bottom of this. So Harlan Coben, big deal, thriller writer, but apparently there's a production company that just churns out, Harlan Coben miniseries based on his novels and ideas all around the world and all around languages. the world. So some of them are like German and dubbed into English and some are British and it's always, you know, you know, mysteries and disappearances and stuff taking place in nice, nice neighborhoods. So it's basically, you're looking at the, you know, the upper middle class of in theory, every country. Um, so cool, cool stuff. I mean, just the kind of trashy thing that, that I, I, love um tony what about you what do you got um i have several things actually actually i just came across something that i'm gonna recommend but (laughs) well first i started watching the strike commando movies because i've been in a schlocky mood and boy those are trashy and amazing uh Uh and in fact strike commando 2 is basically i think i can't remember if i'd mentioned it where it's basically like hey you guys you like raise the lost ark and rambo well Here's a low budget version of that. But because of that, I was recommended a movie called White Fire, which as I was watching it, I meant to send it over to you, Jason. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 1984, music by John Lord of Deep Purple. Okay. And all right. The perhaps one of the most inappropriate uh, bits of gratuitous nudity, because whatever's going on with the uh, main character and his sister is just bizarre but there's so many bizarre choices in this movie uh mostly centered around centered around a diamond that's radioactive like the white fire uh of the title huh and it is so 84 that sounds fabulous but yes, also you must share that with me <laughs> very very questionable like uh, oh like, no questionable taste is where i live that sounds yeah fun. definitely that's, i I, yeah. I can't exactly recommend i mean yeah it's so baffling the through line they made with the with the main character and and his his girlfriend too it it'll leave you scratching your head as far as like did you, did so that one that one's called what again white fire all right so From i have a question about strike commando 2 though yeah here's what's weird so i got an old friend from from high school robert adams so he posted mm-hmm. Yesterday on the well, on the twenty first, he posted two days ago. Strike Commando Two is really twice the movie that Strike Commando was, and, <laughs> and two days before that, he wrote, "I finished Strike Commando. It took four watchings to get through this reinterpretation of Rambo: First Blood Part Two. So, so for some reason, he went on a Strike Commando thing. And I mean, it's on too. Amazon. So what's so going on? Like, why? Well, it's, it's the typical. To me, it's like the same thing I talked about before, where you start watching stuff, low budget stuff, and then Amazon's like, "Oh well, here's some more." In the same <laughs> reason why, for like a three, two or three week period, my nighttime viewing was, "Oh, do you want, you know, pirate movies? Here you right. go." 
all the pirate like you started with you know <laughs> something of the blood and the pirate this and then now here's just every here's all pirate all the time so it makes you wonder I, think how I, I was watching schlocky stuff and yeah. then it goes oh strike commando yes. so you know it it's the way the algorithm works and it it works for me <laughs> because but it's just so strange that you're literally the second person who has mentioned what is not a well-known film, the 1980, 1988 action extravaganza, Strike Commando 2. You're the second person in the last 48 hours to mention this movie to me. That's that's well, weird. They also were selling them, I, I think, I forgot, was it Vinegar or was it Severin? I can't remember. Somebody had been putting those out. Mm, and maybe. I apologize to, I, I apologize if, any, if anybody from either of those companies, you know, you know, I, I have to look that up actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, White Fire was recommended, and that was like, oh, I get this. And then things happen, and I, I had to go. Uh, oh, I don't. <laughs> this didn't. This didn't go exactly how I thought it would. Uh, and and uh, that was it's not at Vinegar Syndrome. So somebody probably has it anyway. Um, but I, I know recently it was being sold through, you know, yeah. recently the discs were put out. And so I would guess that maybe it's Severin, but uh, mm -hmm. I have to look again. Um, yeah, it is. Severin Films has the new Strike Commando 2 Blu-ray. Yeah, Severin. So, oh, man, they're so good because they also put out the, oh, they put out so much good stuff. Uh, yeah. But then I found, just found out that Hakider uh this kind of anti-hero common writer y kind of mm -hmm. uh show is on Midnight Pulp. And I don't have a plus subscription to Midnight Pulp, but I think I should because as I went to go, holy crap, I will watch Hakider because there's also a Hakider film that's not really great, but it does have some really amazing uh special effects like suits and stuff. But the Hakider film isn't really super good also the blu-ray is one of the worst blu-rays i as far as transfers go uh huge disappointment i'm like oh i don't have a kiter on blu-ray yes and then got it and i don't usually complain about the stuff i don't like throwing companies under the bus mm -hmm. but i cannot in good conscience tell anyone to buy a cater on blu-ray it just it mm, it's not very good but go. the original show is now on midnight pulp and it looks like i need to spend more time on midnight pulp because one of the first things that, that's in the spotlight is a movie called doctor of doom which has a gigantic ape and it's from uh looks like a movie from mexico and this is the line which i need to uh, now i need to check this movie out because a female wrestler swears vengeance this is 63 doctor uh -huh. of doom Whereas vengeance against a mad doctor is eight man Gomar after her sister becomes a victim of the doctor's crazy experiments. And let me tell you, just from the poster and that description, uh, I'm I'm here for Doctor of Doom. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna if I don't already have Midnight <laughs> Pulp on my Roku device or some way to stream it, because they have a premium subscription too. Yeah. Me, so, but I need to find. You'd think that they'd be subselling that through Prime, by the way, that you'd, you'd have a way of, of just adding it yeah, as a Prime I think channel. Perhaps, but but now I'm definitely watching, you know, anti hero uh Japanese stuff because that stuff is good. And yeah, for sure. Doctor of Doom. I, I'm I am sold on this poster. Uh you just have to go to midnightpulp.com and I'm I am down with that. <laughs> so this this is my discovery but yes uh those things but definitely like white fire i don't know if it's for everyone because like i said it gets into it's there's some weird i don't know that script is seedy <laughs> <laughs> or you just know, like I, I, and if you don't think it's seedy i'm kind of like uh I don't, you know severin like, severin has this whole thing that they call you know just like sleaze basically like like you know they'll be like especially right. your sort of revenge and sexploitation pictures and stuff they'll go this one is sleazy um 
and I find oftentimes those things are a little too sleazy for me. Uh, but... There, there are there are more than a few that are. Well, I look at them and go, ooh, vinegar as well, which I love. I love what they do, and I have tons of their movies. There's there's a line that's CD where I go, you know, I am not going to tell anyone what sure. to watch. But right, right, right. For me, that's not for me. At it's all. not for me. Yeah, but no. Strike, I, Com- Strike Commando, however, is enjoyable, and also it's funny that they went you know, Rambo 2, because Strike Commando 2 is Rambo 2, but also <laughs> Raiders. And I'm, t- I'm talking about the numbers are barely filed off on that. That <laughs> like, sounds great. And it's great because it's, I mean, it is, if if that's what you want, yes, this will give you that. And, and I, I say this, like, I always think of it as like, sometimes you have a hankering uh, and I, I hope this doesn't offend any movie filmmakers or whatever. I hope you get where I'm coming from. Sometimes you have a hankering for a Totino's pizza. Mm-hmm. And it's not your great local pizza place. and But it, it is very specific taste if you grew up with that. Yeah. Or Long John Silver's or something like you. There's a mm-hmm. specific taste. Olive Garden breadsticks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, it's not exactly good for you. <laughs> and it's, it's, of a budget, you know, a, a lower in budget, but yeah, it is when you get that, it is so satisfying. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. and that's like a, it's a comfort food that you know it's not really great for you, but boy, it does it hit the spot, and that's yeah. where movies like uh, Strike Commando and and even to some extent the movie we talked about tonight, like they hit that that part where. Maybe it's not high art, depending on, you know, what you're thinking of. But boy, when it hits the spot, it hits the spot, and I love that. I, I'm all about that. Wonderful. And I'm not guilt, and I don't feel guilty at all for for. Oh God, uh, no! You know, no ingesting no... visually or, <laughs> or like cooking up that Totino's pizza. Either one of those, you know. There's there's That's no just, clipboard. It, it hits like the spot. I, like I've said, yeah. Um. I have been reading and loving like crazy this book called Ad Nauseum, which is a collection of of newsprint uh, newspaper ads for horror movies from the 70s and the 80s. And it this is a book that just has blown my mind in how cool it is. And it's got a forward by Joe Dante. I mean, this is great. I'm going to interview this guy on the show because I really want to hear about all that went into pulling it all together. But it's just, it's so cool because, you know, you, you'll see like what was being advertised in the papers in 1983 or 1977 or, or whatever. And of course, there's the movies, you know, you know, like, you know, what came out in 1975? Well, Jaws. So of course, there's a page of Jaws ads. But there's also all this other stuff that you've never heard of, you know, and he'll sometimes point out this movie is actually uh, a movie that had already come out under the, under these couple of names, you know, but now it had a new name and it, and it had been re-released and this is an ad for it. And it's just cool. I, I you know, I've just been really enjoying reading this book. So um, as a, as a yeah. film nerd who used to look at the, uh, listings whenever I could just to see what was out, even if I couldn't, because you know the local theater was so far away. Yeah, uh, that sounds amazing. Because yes. I definitely, you know, what what is this about? And read, with, you know, read the synopsis, read the reviews, and try to figure out like if I could get to the movies, what what kind? Oh I do yeah, see? that sounds. I would amazing. watch all those. You know, like, like I'd get the paper and open it up to the to the movie listing thing, and just lay on the floor and just read them all. You know, and I remember distinctly like stuff like How to Beat the High Cost of Living, which had like Jane Curtin. You know, and just like like just random movies, and you know, and all the times and the, you know that somebody out there is watching these things. You know, um, yeah, I miss that. We, I don't. I don't get a. I, we pay for several newspaper subscriptions, but we don't take a paper paper anymore. So I, you know, I haven't done that in years, you know, but it's, it's so cool to read this anyway. Uh, that's it. Thank you everybody for, for talking about abominable. This was such a blast. Drew, thank you so much for, for bringing this to us. 
Y'all know what we have next week, right? We have The Crawling Eye. It is a bonus episode of our abominable snowman because it is a snow creature, but it's not a snowman. It is, in fact, a crawling eye. Unless you, will, count, will... unless you count Forrest Tucker. Right. He's I, will, I will be watching both the real movie and the MST version. Sweet. Sweet. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait. So that's that's going to be super fun. And um, everybody be excellent to one another. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys. Night. Night. Good night. Good night.